Thank you for joining me. This is James Spencer from Spencer Music. This is London College of Music's History of Film Composers. And what we will be doing is I will be putting up lectures uh, every week on a different composer. Last week we did Max Steiner. Today we're going to be looking at the composer Franz Waxman. So let's get started. Franz Waxman was born Franz Waxman uh, to Jewish-German immigrant family in a city that was called, you're going to love this, Kunigschütte, which is now part of Poland. Okay, and Franz Waxman is going to become one of the most famous composers in Hollywood. Let me give you a list of a few of his great films. Uh, the first being The Bride of Frankenstein, Rebecca for, for Hitchcock, and later also Rear Window for Hitchcock, Sunset Boulevard, probably his most famous film, A Place in the Sun, and Peyton Place. Okay, He would actually win two consecutive Oscars for best scores in consecutive years, the first for Sunset Boulevard, the next year for A Place in the Sun. He also won the Golden Globe for Sunset Boulevard as well, for best score. Okay, in addition to his films, he did do some other serious works that we should take notice of. One was an oratorio in 1959 called Joshua, and the other was the Song of Territzen, which is 1965, which was for a chorus, children's chorus and orchestra, dealing with themes and poetry that were from the concentration camps during World War II. Um, Waxman also founded the LA Music Festival in 1947, where he also conducted a lot of premieres of very famous works by uh, American and European composers, works of Stravinsky, works of Rachmaninoff. Uh, he conducted the premiere of Miklos Rocha's Violin Concerto, for example. Okay, so let's get to work uh, here. So a little bit of, again, Franz Waxman's early life. As we said that Franz Waxman was born Franz Waxman on Christmas Eve, December 24th, 1906. And um, this is really interesting. When he was three years old, he suffered a really fluky eye injury where what happened is his mother had some boiling water on the stove and he was curious and he went up to the stove and the pot of water fell over him and a third degree burned his left eye, making him permanently blind for the rest of his life in that eye. So unfortunate event, but he was still able to wear glasses and see uh, out of the other eye and so forth. Okay, in 1923 at age 16, he enrolls in the Dresden Music Academy, and he lived off money that he made working as a pianist, conductor, and orchestrator for a lot of the cabarets of the time. This is where he met, um, you know, Friedrich Hollander, who was a famous, you know, cabaret composer, mostly associated, by the way, with Marlena Dietrich. He wrote a lot of songs for her, you know, Falling in Love Again, uh, and so forth. And through Friedrich Hollander, he also met the conductor Bruno Walter, who would have a big influence uh, in his early life uh, working as a um, composer-conductor. He was also the pianist for a cabaret group called the Weinstraub Syncopators. And uh, again, he kind of got started in the underground cabaret scene. And um, anyway, this led him to working with Friedrich Hollander our Mar Mar Marlena Dietrich's movie, The Blue Angel, 1930. And he would do the orchestrations for that movie, and um, that would kind of get him into film. He also, the next year, would do a movie called Lilium. Well, anyway, what happens is uh, w the next year, Waxman basically got beat up by Nazi sympathizers in Berlin. And this truly scared him, um, you know, with Hitler coming into power. So basically in the middle of the night, him and his wife skipped over the border into Switzerland and uh, then uh, came to America 
uh, and to Hollywood and got the hell out of that country, which was very smart, you know. And so what happens is shortly after arriving in Hollywood, he meets the film director James Whale. And James Whale was um, mostly noted for Universal Pictures, horror pictures, specifically the two great horror films, Frankenstein and then The Bride of Frankenstein. So James Whale asks Franz Waxman to, to do the musical score for The Bride of Frankenstein. And this score does very well. The movie does very well. And, um, you know, it establishes Waxman basically as a, you know, Hollywood composer. And then what happens is he l leaves Universal to go to MGM. And this is where Franz Waxman meets, an, you know, Alfred Hitchcock, who had just arrived from England to start filming his first movie in the U.S. for David L. Selznick. And that movie is Rebecca. And so Franz Waxman is going to write the symphonic score for Rebecca. And this really becomes a, you know, very important movie uh, and does very, very well. Now what's interesting is, again, we said Franz Waxman did the score to Rebecca. And just a year before, we have Max Steiner doing Gone with the Wind. So these two composers, Steiner and Waxman, really become the leading film composers in Hollywood of the late 30s and early 40s. There's a few others we're going to study too, but like I said, Franz Waxman really gets established uh, due to his work with, um, you know, with uh, Rebecca. So then, um, you know, he then moves to Warner Brothers. And um, in, in about 1943, 44 in there. And then he starts to change direction. Warner Brothers was known more for its film noir and suspense movies. And so the first major movie uh, in that style that Franz Waxman's going to score is 1948 Sorry, Wrong Number, which starred Barbara Stanwyck. And after that, we then get uh, the movie he's going to win the Oscar for, and that is in 1950, we get Sunset Boulevard, his most famous music score. Uh, and, of course, that stored, you know, Gloria Swanson. And in that specific score, you know, we get, you know, the iconic, bizarre tango music that is associated with Norma Desmond's character, right? And then we also get um, sort of the jazzy or bebop feel of the music associated with William Holden's character. And what's interesting is... Franz Waxman loved the opera Salome by Richard Strauss and got the idea for, you know, the, the Dance of the Seven Veils from Salome, from Richard Strauss's, uh, the, the idea for that to develop the crazy, you know, maniacal tango music that we hear for Norma Desmond, especially at the very end of that movie where she comes down the staircase and says, I'm, you know, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. You know, we hear that weird music. So uh, that becomes, again, I should say that Sunset Boulevard is probably Franz Waxman's most important score to study, okay? Um, so let's see. Let me see what else I want to get into here. Um, and then the very next year, uh, he also wins the Oscar for A Place in the Sun, and that score does very, very well, uh, too. And um, later in life, um, you know, he moves after uh, the, the last major movie was called Terrace Bulba in 62. And then he did score a little bit for television uh, in his later years. And most famously for the country western show Gunsmoke around 1966. So he did do a little bit of television. And, um, like I said, that's pretty much, you know, everything uh, that you need to really know as an overview for Franz Waxman. And uh, thank you for joining me, and uh, we'll see you next week.
Take care.